I think it's been very helpful because I'm seeing it carry through from year to year that the, they're remembering the vocab, and which then ties it back into things they know they've done. And usually they've just done it on a piece of paper, you know, and done it themselves. So what I'm doing now is they're actually going to build a digital notebook that they'll take from year to year to year. So they'll have all their vocab from their freshman year that they can refer to as sophomores. And then as juniors, they'll have sophomore and freshman year. And by the time they're seniors, they'll have three years worth of vocabulary that they can go back and refer to if they're having one of those days of, I can't remember what it was called, or tying it back in. So kind of making almost a digital portfolio of that for them. You know, somehow or another, create the words themselves instead of my handing them a sheet. And then I'm just going to the index and typing in or writing down whatever the math ease that, that goes with that definition by taking that third step and having them either create a diagram or draw a picture or in some cases just reword and put it into their own language or find an example, they're now owning that better than just you know throwing back out, oh well it's the x is the positive negative square root of n. What does that mean? So they're not just memorizing, they're starting to own what these things actually mean because they've had to use it and come up with their own examples to prove that they know it. I started using those about with different classes oh, probably three or four months ago because it gives them a form that they can actually sit with and say, okay, I have to write down something over here. You know, so today, you know, I'm still scaffolding some of this, so I've given, I gave them two of the important concepts there. You know, as they're moving on, it'll be up to them to start filling that in. But it gives them something to work with that day that they can write on that will eventually, once they get comfortable with it, I'll move that into a more digital format so they'll be able to keep that with their vocab. And when we get to the end of the chapter, they should have five or six of these that they can go back and look at and use as a study guide to help them get ready for a test. All right, so we've got your MacBooks up. Get into your vocab that we started the other day. We need to go through, we're going to do this each section as we're going, adding in the new words for the section. We've only got two words to add in today. Go through, put in the two words in this section, put in the book's definition from this section. So what's the first word we come across? Square root property. Square root property. What does the book definition say? For any real number n, if x squared equals n, then x equals plus or minus. Plus or minus um, square root of n. All right. That's the book definition. So we've got to get that in there. Let's see if we can put that into nicer words. The next thing we want to look at is let's do some of the two column notes. Now, for this time, I've started you out with the two things that we just talked about. Square root property and completing the square. I've given you those two. So what questions might we have about the square root property that we want to add into here? What kind of answer or example could I, could I put over here maybe to go with the square root property? Did you use this one when you just used? Yeah, right. We have two examples here, right? And remember the purpose of doing this is when we get to the end of what we're doing with quadratic functions, this will give you a study guide to go back to and look at. It'll help you with your vocabulary as well, so you're getting double dipped on the vocabulary between the triple angel journey and this. I, I think they work because we all use them just a little bit differently too. So the kids are seeing that, well, you know, in Mrs. Smith's class, this is what she expects us, us to do with two column notes. So Miss Willard is doing it a little bit differently, but oh, look at it, it works for more than one setting. You know, Mrs. Alley in science might use it completely differently. So they're getting a tool that they, you know, that's not just, oh, this is my math, this is my math tool, I can only use this in math. The literacy strategies that they get from me and the other teachers here and will learn in life as they go along, give them multiple ways to attack something, to approach it. So if I can give them some to start with, they'll find others along the way. And they may learn things from me that they take to the science room or to the English room. They may bring something to the English room and say, and I've had it happen, oh, we were doing this in English, can, can I use that in here? You know, we were doing frame models. Can we do frame models in here? Sure, let's do frame models. 